Welcome to the Swim Swim Breakdown. As always, I'm your host, Coleman Hodges, coming to you from Austin, Texas. We are joined by Swim Swim Editor-in-Chief Braden Keith from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and two-time Olympic champion Tom Shields from Berkeley, California. There's not been a lot of swimming in the last week, so this entire podcast is just going to be about the World Cup. Tom Tom's favorite World Cup. We do have short course really worlds. Watched at least a minute of it. Wait, we have to start with this great story. Tom, can you tell everyone what you told me about the world record uh, bonus at World Cup? How oh, Jessica no, Hardy changed the rules? Bonus. No, it was the Jessica. The Jessica. Oh, the Hardy Jessica rule. Hardy. Okay, I can't prove it was actually sixteen. This is according to her. Five years later. And then me eight, remembering her telling me this <laughs> eight years after that. But so if I'm this saying quality, um, this is how we do journalism, I'll have to caveat <laughs> that I didn't look this up. But um, this year we were joke. We were looking at like the bonuses of uh, like the world. It was like weirdly worded. It's like it can only pay out once per meet. And someone's like, well, that's why. And I was like, oh, because Jessica in 2009 broke the, like, the 50 breast world record like 16 different times at eight meets. And she wasn't like the only one doing that. Like everyone was kind of showing up and like hedging their bets and like, especially in those fifties. I, yeah. I remember that's when I first started writing about swimming. Um, and I was not like a big swim geek before that. I didn't read the magazines or do any of that. And I was like, holy crap, are there really supposed to be this many world records broken? Like, is this what covering swimming is like? I had, I had no idea that that was yeah. not normal when I started. Swimming was almost going to be fun. And then make uh, swimming I'm super to again. Along and make sure it wasn't fun Sp- yeah. specifically my generation while we were in college. <laughs> and then like all these kids now look back and it's like, why were you guys like so slow? It's like, well, <laughs> you got recruited with an understanding that we had this skill and then those skills changed. <laughs> We were supposed to be really, really fast. <laughs> and then everything changed. Okay, we're not actually. Like, it took a lot of us a lot, of, like a couple of years to kind of refigure ourselves out. And some dudes never did. And, you had yeah. some like four IMers code to like these top, top end schools who just like disappear. I mean, I, I feel like. I remember. Kind of fault, but it's true. I remember 2010 Pan Packs was like a rough meet to watch. <laughs> After 2009 World Champs, everyone was like. Ooh, that's what I said, dude. I, if you don't, if you erase times, like Phelps' 100 fly from 2010, I think is like where he shows how much better and how, like, what his actual skill level was. Is like he could put stuff together faster than other people. Mm-hmm. So he was like 50.5 there, 50.6, something ridiculous. And it's like he was like 24, 26, one. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, this guy's just like <laughs> within nine months figured oh. out what the future was going to be. Turns out he's really good at swimming. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have heard of him. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. Okay, we're actually. Is that I really have a lot of respect for. <laughs> we're, not, we're not actually talking about World Cup the whole time. We're talking about <laughs> Minnesota invite the whole time. JK, but we are starting with that. Minnesota invite it. I, I, I guess airplanes got delayed. <laughs> I didn't actually read the whole article, but I assume everyone's there. Oh, I assume the meet's starting the on winter. time. Shocking. It snows. <clears throat> um, but it is going to be a good meet. It's kind of a weird shaping up to be a weird meet. There's uh, Texas and Cal both have some stars who aren't showing up. But what are you most excited to see of the athletes that will be in Minneapolis this weekend? Uh, I think I'm most excited to see Carson Foster, what he can do in a tapered 500 free after going that 409. Um, We assume he's going to come in with some kind of a rest, getting ready for worlds or preparing to rest or, you know, there's all these degrees of taper that we always pretend are things. Um, So I'm excited to see what he can do all suited up in a 500 free. Um, You know, I'm kind of excited to see like what Wisconsin can do, right? Wisconsin seems to have a lot of momentum. They seem to have some, some positive upward energy. Um, Obviously they have Phoebe Bacon. They have uh, what's her face who won the NCAA title. Paige McKenna. Paige McKenna. Um, So I'm kind of excited to see what Wisconsin can do in this big meet. Um, I'm also excited to see what the Cal women can do with Dave Marsh uh, steering that ship out of the darkness um so those are probably the things that i'm most looking for obviously cal versus texas is is always exciting on the men's side um but you know it's cal versus texas whatever we know how they feel about midseason meets <laughs> tom what uh, do you got yeah, for I mean, us I friends there so like i think dare um pretty stoked to see him go and gabe um my little butterfly group 
Tom, hard, you got to use last names on the podcast. There. Those are going to be the things I'm checking in on first. Tom, you got to use last names on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Dari Rose and Gabe Jet. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> our, our readers are really good with last names. They're not so good with first names all the time. So with both teams kind of not having their stars there, I don't, I don't even, I right now on paper, I don't think it's going to be close, but of the Cal Texas battle, who do you see coming out on top? Nobody because they don't score this meet. <laughs> remember, remember when Texas was begging people to show up to their athletic competition three weeks ago? Well, now they're back to same old, same old. We don't score this meet because a very long list of very mediocre reasons. Is that um, Minnesota's so, choice of not scoring the meet? We Nobody is ever going to say whose choice it is. I have an opinion on whose choice it probably is, just looking at the teams and that are attending and how they typically behave in these scenarios. We will score the meet, so we will have a pretend <laughs> winner. Um, Texas did win this meet by 400 points last year, even with Carson Foster only swimming one race. So Texas will probably, the Texas men and women will probably come out on top because the invite scoring is just a little weird that way. Um, it's 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 not reflective of anything, right? Like Texas won by 400 points last year and we know what happened in March. Um, but Texas will probably win. You think so? I mean, like even with, like they don't have Casper, who's a huge points. relay piece. They don't have, I mean, I think so. They lost Drew Kibler. <laughs> they lost like uh, Alvin Jiang. They Relays lost. They're meaningless in this format, Coleman. So they're going to go from first to second. That's 12 point, 12 point swing. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just, so that's 60 points out of 400. But that's, that's a lot. Like the Cal's depth has gone up here and their depth, Texas's depth has gone far down and they don't have Casper who's their like, Main breaststroker and sprint freestyle. I don't know. Four hundred points. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm calling Cal. I think the Cal men will win. Can you guys count to four hundred. Tom, ready to go. We'll let you know when when you can nah, start. That. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I, in the new era, and it's been new whatever since my senior year, so it's the ninth year of it. A lot of these teams have like shifted to getting their cuts in midseason. Um, like when I was in school, that was just like not a concern because you could do relay quals. Um, I think like we were one of the earlier teams and then Texas really started to commit to swimming fast in December. I forget like 16, 17, let's say. I mean, this is all the Frank Bush. Frank Bush was the legend of this, even under the old qualification. Exactly. Yeah. And now it's just kind of like the way it's done. So I'm much more interested to see like, what are the qualification numbers coming out? Like that's who wins this meet um because like there's no if you like you can they're both public schools so i could just like do do, 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 pull up their contracts and be like what did this coach want (laughs) it's pretty easy with cal and texas right yeah like and then you look at like tennessee and you're like oh that's why they do that you look at virginia and like oh that's why they do that and Mm -hmm. like you look at these contracts that's why these teams are bent towards the way they're bent um so like whoever comes out with an easier path towards getting 18 good scoring men in march that's who's winning this um that's my that's my read on it at least because nobody is actually winning the meet. So. Yeah, this is a setup situation. <laughs> like, like, like I wish we had to like uh, is it Vegas or Hawaii or the but like you know the the basketball tournaments bef- you know, before mm-hmm. the tournament where we can like have fun and stuff. But we're not a this sport is not very much fun. We make sure of it. So <laughs> we make sure that, of it. That clip is going on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's true. This sport isn't very fun. All right. Speaking no, of another the funnest, meet, guys, <laughs> we've also got U.S. Open this weekend, <laughs> which will have at least one fun event. I hope in the women's forward freestyle. Yeah. Okay, who you got? Who you got here? There will be a winner. The, the, it doesn't matter if they scored or not. Katie Ledecky <laughs> or Summer McIntosh in the four hundred freestyle. <laughs> I think Ledecky scratches because she's scared of Summer. I'm kidding. <sighs> um, I think. I think summer. I just think her age is going to going to lend her more toward being kind of sharp and ready to go at this meet. Um she's got the most recent win. I'm going to take summer. I don't know that I think that means that summer's going to beat Katie next summer at uh, next summer. Haha. <laughs> at the World Championships. Um but I I think summer's going to have it here. Uh, you know, we have to remember Ledecky 
even though Florida in, in their heavy training all season long, whatever, whatever, she's been fast in season. So we can't count her out on those accords anymore, I don't think. But I think Summer's just going to have the energy and the positive momentum. Yeah, I like Katie um, if she's like the January Katie that we sometimes see. But yeah. it's like, is Troy going to or whoever the group going to want to do that? Or are they going to do that in January? And like there was times with Bruce's group where it was like, Hard to know because I was hard to know like who specifically was in Bruce's group. That's a huge team. But like Katie would break a world record after altitude. And I wouldn't necessarily see the rest of the group perform in that nature. So like, is that a plan or is Katie just adapting or whatever? Yeah. So like Katie's absolutely capable. So if that's the Katie that shows up, then yeah, Katie. Well, it's interesting that she's sometimes faster in January than December. So it's. it's exactly. Yeah. That's what I, <laughs> I, I, I almost felt like on purpose because it's like a little bit more of a gradient, like. Yeah. from August to January is like sometimes a six to eight week period. Cause it's January twenties versus the first week of December. Um, yeah. I, I almost wonder they've never if said that out loud. And like, I mean, Bruce seems to have the opposite opinion, at least verbally. So I wonder how much of that is just the, you know, winter training they want to do their winter training without a taper before their, their holiday training that everybody always does, you know? So yeah. 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 And you avoid time. a lot of like shaking around during flu season. So yeah, I, I definitely respect the maneuver. Yeah. Ah, that's a hard yeah. one. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, I think I'm going with summer as well, probably because of recency bias, because she won their last 400 battle. But I think it seems like she's doing well with Brent Arkey in Florida. Uh, Katie Ledecky has always has also seemed like she's doing really well with in Florida. So it's crazy that they're training like in the same state, in the same vicinity, really. Sarasota is like, what, two hours from Gainesville, probably? Mm-hmm. Or four, because Florida is enormous. <laughs> I don't really know. But I, yeah, I'll, I'll go with, with youth over Ledecky. Well, and, and, and like Sarasota, she's going to have a team. She's going to feel the whole team vibe. This is probably the first time in a few years she's been training with peers. So I think that's going to have some, some positive vibe for summer. Um, seems like there's a lot of things in her favor. That, that raises my next point of she will have a team, but there are a lot of people whose whole teams aren't going, including most notably the ASU pro group. Uh, I think Reagan will be there. I think one or two others for J- Chase Kalish will be there, but like no Simone, no Olivia, no Jay Litherland, no Ryan held, although I think he's getting married, but there are a lot of pros missing from this U S mm-hmm. open. And some of them are obviously going to short course worlds, but any theories on why it would be a good idea or, or just why they're not showing up to this December long course racing opportunity. Well, we know Bob Bowman loves long course racing opportunities, um, but I bet they're going to find something closer to home. I wouldn't be surprised to see them pop up next week on somewhere closer to home. Maybe Tom knows where they're going. Um, is this a meet that they, they've they got to go to to get their national team money? I was going to say, going down that list, it was like, okay, so no obligation, no obligation, worlds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, it's – it's who's uh, why are they going to fly from Tempe to Raleigh? unless there's i don't know they're structured i'm not i'm obviously also not going but let's say it's the normal 1500 to win thousand per second third and you're a one event guy like held and let's say caleb is going and there's no worlds or you just say me (laughs) the hundred fly with phelps or caleb so it's like i can show up get second and lose money yeah because they're not the funding isn't there so it's like why like i'm gonna do everything i can to not do these it seems like this meet has sort of faltered in importance since it stopped being a college midseason in yeah. right as well. Tom and I so were talking about that earlier. Kind of short. It's hilarious. Time. Like all these coaches, like, oh, it's long course, this long course, that. And then, like, within the 10 years, like, USA Swimming was still sticking to it being long course. And then nobody goes because yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, well. Right. I, they, maybe they should just go back to being short course meet. Yeah. And I think it'd be great, like for teams that want higher end competition where they, they kind of starve for that. I know some coaches too want, oh, well, I want like my B cut guys to get night swims. And that mm-hmm. isn't a guarantee with, uh, you know, the three meet, the three heats and one being 18 and under um, at nationals. So like that was another reason why a team stopped going. But um, who knows, you know? 
Yeah, it's, well, it seems like it, it kind of feels like USA Swimming sold out to a certain contingent and then that contingent didn't sort of hold up their end of the bargain, right? Like yeah. they didn't, USA Swimming sold out to the the pros, the future Olympians who said, we want a long course meet, we want a long course meet. And then yeah. those swimmers so, are not supporting the meet. Yeah. Also, yeah, isn't I mean, part of it- They're getting like chair of steering and that would make sense. <laughs> when, <laughs> is, is part of it the <laughs> fact that the Olympic trials qualifying period starts today or tomorrow and they want to have that first long course opportunity, mm -hmm. but that's also weird because winter juniors is the next week and their short course. <laughs> Yeah. And, and the and, college format. <laughs> right. And the pros are going to qualify regardless, right? Like Olivia right. Smoliga, Ryan Held, all these swimmers that we've named, like don't need to get their qualifications out of the way. It literally doesn't matter. They can swim in a parachute and they'll still get their cuts. Yeah. And I mean, from like a senior development mindset, it's hard to argue that that's worth the whole meet, right? And that's what you're saying when you're worried about Olympic trial cuts. Mm-hmm. And this, yeah. I, I don't know. And like you were like, I saw your tweet the other day about like buying tickets and stuff. That is like another way to do that is like get a cut so you can get on deck. Yeah. Um, but like, why are we putting all this money behind like the interests of a bunch of 15 year old people? Like, I, I don't know. That's my opinion. Because <laughs> they're the ones that pay the bills, Tom. Fair enough. But then they don't get. <laughs> another championships that i'd like to discuss are the russian championships that happened we saw a world record from clement kaleshnikov in the 50 back short course meters and a number two time all time uh from miss Chikanova in the 200 breast short course meters uh do you feel that these records should count given that russians are banned given that this these were swam in russia given all of the circumstances surrounding Russia uh, politically and globally at the moment. Well, first of all, they have to count because the ban didn't preclude them from racing at home. It didn't preclude them from setting world records. So, you know, statutorily, they should count for those reasons. You know, if you if you zoom out a little bit and say, should it have forbidden them from all of these things? Um, and my opinion is, no, it should not have forbidden them. Um, what Russia has done in Ukraine, what there's evidence of of war crimes and, and all kind of problematic things. Um, I am I've written several editorials saying I am in favor of the international suspension. I, you know, layered on top of the doping issues um, and all of the other things. I think it makes for an easy case to ban them from international competition. And I think it's important to ban them from international athletics. I know swimming isn't the top of that pile, but Having them not in the World Cup this week, for example, I think matters. I think that's impactful. Um, but at the end of the day, if they're racing legally with with all the proper rules in place, which I know is always a big if with Russia, um, I you know world records exist to recognize the fastest swimmer who ever did it, and if that's the purpose of a world record, then I see no reason not to count it. Definitely agree they should count, although I disagree with almost everything else. <laughs> hey, I think like I have too many foreign friends to to say what you said. And and and, and I think everyone has a right to believe whatever they want, but it's like our like I don't know. Should we have been in Athens then? There, yeah. I, I could go on, kind of but you know what I'm you know what I'm saying? Like we invaded right. Iraq. There's I don't know. And that's always the downhill spiral, right? Like there will never not that be is. more, but there's a there's a difference between what Russia has done and there's accountability, right? When the U.S. soldiers commit war crimes in Iraq, there are trials, there are public trials, and and there is some level of accountability. And of course, you always can you can spiral cynically and say what happened, what didn't happen. At the end of the day, absolutely. But like, how much of that is on Clement Kolesnikov? That dude swims, or. True. For example, but, his ex teammate, um, help me, big paddle smile, Michaela Romanchov. Like, like those guys swim. I know them. They're swimmers. Like, they're like me. Like, I'm not like, why does my right to swim all of a sudden I need to enter to like a public policy debate and who was more morally justified? Like, but it's swimmers, to me, man. it's we, we touch to pad. Me, it's not about that. People. To me, and it's like, not I don't about know. That's that's how I come down on that, dude. Like, it makes but no the Olympics sense. At the end of the, the day, it just are... hurts the athletes. 
more than anyone else. This is a sport that we know no one really cares about. So the only person who's really hurt by this is the Russian athletes. Putin's not sitting here, like you were saying, swimming's on the top of the pile, saying like, oh man, if only like Clement got the, okay, I'll change. Like, the only people being hurt by this are the swimmers. But he is, they are mad that the, Russia's not in the World Cup. That impacts the, popula- the, the population. Um, and, and I don't think piecemealing it and choosing which sports are important and which sports aren't is is a good way to go and at the end of the day whether olympic swimmers like it or not they are tools of their regime the olympics are about nationalism and yeah. flying the flag um on that note i exist. see no evidence of this ever working in the past from 1980 till now like it's you it just doesn't mean i don't know it just it blows my mind that people isolation think- of south africa ended apartheid that's ultimately what brought down apartheid and part of that was an olympic ban next topic is the short course world championships <laughs> uh which is kind of like the world cup but it's it's been interesting right we've seen the u.s roster fluctuate a couple times this past week due to various chain stuff um but it's kind of interesting that we've seen people turn roster spots down or i guess we assume that people in the U.S. have turned them down. Um, Tom, I'd kind of like you to answer this first, but how much stock or how much focus do you think like a professional swimmer should have on a short course world championships in terms of the money they could make, in terms of their swimming legacy, or just in terms of what they could gain from that experience? Yeah, I got in an argument with a few coaches um, in 2014. Like It's like, oh, you made like a good bit of money there. Like, that's cool, whatever, but like summer's the mission. And it's like, no, you can just make more money in the summer. Like (laughs) money motivates the goal here, man. Like if you have a problem with the increase in funding in short course worlds, cool. But like they have, and like from 2010 till now, it's the biggest growth meet we've had. Now it's a little bit down from last year. So like, yeah, the focus will scale with that. Um, And it's like, if you can come through and win a couple of medals and not, rest that much because you're like an extreme a team athlete then by means that's what you should do and if you have no interest and you want to stay home and it's like the way bria larson said this to me once about like uh investing in like business class seats on the way to world cup um or like a meet so like uh or an a team meet or or whatever or a pro swim um mm-hmm. it's like would could someone pay you that much money for you to have like a worse experience on this flight like think like i think about it that way so it's like, let's say, um, look, 2016, I think I made like 60K in winnings and then contract. I'm not going to tell you that part. Um, so it's like, can someone pay you 60K to not do this and like be home? Well, the answer clearly that week was no. So I went and did it. So it's like, I, that's how I always thought about it and about everything. And it's like, funnily enough, when you're like a relay only morning guy, like the Olympics is like a lot of work for a little pay. So like, that's why I don't have much respect for the summer where I can show up to a couple of meets and make, you know, well, last year paid out, um, like the world cups last year, I show up to four meets and make hundred K like, that's pretty dope. Um, the same amount of work where I'm making, you know, maybe double than what I made. The meet. Um, funnily enough. Right. So it's like, you got to look at who it is where it's like, well, if I'm Caleb or if I'm Murph or if I'm Pearsall or if I'm Phelps or if I'm Lochte, it's like, well, then yeah, the, uh, Opportunity cost, or if that's not the right term, whatever cost of investing in summer is there. But that's not going to be there for every A team member. It's probably only going to really be there for about five a quad um, over the span of four years. And about each year, if you're talking about like the 200K plus group and just winnings, contracts aside, um, maybe half the team can have a mm-hmm. shot at that because you have to be able to win your event. Um, so, I don't know. That's my opinion. My my numbers are maybe off, but it's all money. So yeah, it's just like, does that money make sense for you? And does the travel make sense for you? Like when they were in Doha and Istanbul, like that was not as fun than Windsor and like Melbourne's farther away. So that's like my, like, that's how I looked at it. That's how I think most people will look at it as they age. Um, There's no meaning behind any of this to me. Like the 12 year old saying, they're like, I want to do this someday. Like that got satisfied pretty quickly. Um, And this is a job. (laughs) I don't know. That was how I was. And maybe that's why I wasn't as good as these guys who were able to like attach their mission statement to it. It's still so. Yeah. I mean, the reactions we hear from athletes about our news coverage indicates that a lot of them have look at it a lot more emotionally, a lot less sort of calculated than that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, it's, I, I have this existential crisis about sports. Like I am so over, this is what the third time in this podcast we've talked about do sporting competitions matter. Um, yeah. And it's like, God, I, I don't you just remember like when you're a kid growing up watching the mainstream sports, all you cared about was your team winning. Like I was, a, I was a Bulls fan in the nineties and I didn't know, you know, living in Chicago, I was a big Bulls fan. I watched every game. And when I say I watched every game, I watched every game. And I didn't know about all of this Jerry Reinsdorf stuff until I watched the documentary as an adult. Yeah. Uh, and and I feel like swimming, part of the problem with swimming is it's too, it's financially too close to the cusp. Like LeBron James makes competitive decisions based on, on the money he's going to make, right? But it's not the same as long as LeBron James does what keeps him popular, as long as he stays popular, he, he will make hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, right? Like, so there's an, an, an incentive to him to continue to just make basketball exciting, make basketball bigger, mm -hmm. make LeBron James bigger, show up when he's supposed to entertain people, all those things, right? Like there's a, there's a, a way he can sort of put the calculation out of his head and say, sometimes I just show up and play. And it feels like in swimming, every single decision is a money decision. There's never like not a money decision. Um, and and it's sort of it's like a, a, a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Like that holds back the money. But yeah. like you can't until you get over that hump, the money's not going to be there. Yeah. I mean, or you're subsidized. Yeah. <laughs> Which and is like, like hey, no, no, no hate on those kids. Like, I mean, Katie was never going to hurt for money. Right. And like, I'm not here being like, boom, that's cool. But like when you talk to USA swimming staff members, not about Ledecky, um, but like a good one, uh, they're like, oh, we, you know, we have this new 200 fly kid. Like he doesn't complain about money. He's not up our ass about this, this and this. Like, Bob, it's Luke Orlando. He's a 15 year old kid. And he's like, he's just like having fun. And it's like, yeah, so was I when I was 15, but you didn't know my name. <laughs> And it's not like you, not that you should, I wasn't a 153, 200 flyer, but like, that's why you like them. But it's like this intended bias of the sport where it's like, yeah, like you're going to be subsidized until you make the team or until you start making money and you get good, really, really young, or your parents pay for you well into your twenties mm -hmm. or every decision you make is about money. And like, most I, the league minimum here is a million dollars or 500 K or depending on, you know, how you look at it. Yeah. The league minimum here is no health insurance. Right. <laughs> so it's a little bit different of a game we're playing, bro. It'd be it would have meant a lot to me if I had won a world title. I'm not gonna say like no, but like I don't know if you if you ever if anyone ever bothers to look at like the short course rivalry, the main one of my career being with Chad, it's probably like 75 to eleven. Um, not in my favor. <laughs> right. So it's like I got puzzle. that beat out of me pretty quick, like the oh, maybe next year. It's like, okay, maybe next year, but like in the meantime, like, what am I actually doing here? Like, this is going to be a big chunk of my life. Like in the, you know, if you live 75 years, you know, what is that? 10% of that would be like 7,000. So 10 years of my life or a seventh of that, whatever, 10,000. So I spent 10,000 days swimming. Like how much, I'm not good at math. Shut up. It's like <laughs> That's why you went at a high level. Water. Like what was the purpose for me? So the purpose was for me now that I'm looking mostly back at it. But about halfway through it, I put this together. It's like, it's my lifestyle. Like, I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to see friends. I want to be able to get off of work or not really work. And like, I'm willing to trade the physical pain for that. But yeah, it was hard for me to attach to like the goals or like the meaning of anything. Um, not that I felt like it was attainable or not, but it's just like, that is so not guaranteed. So like that stuff's like the fun part of the sport. Whereas like, what's the actual, you know, reason? What's the actual decisions? The actual decisions are based around it's like a job how much money tom <laughs> you know what i mean like the decisions are always made like a job and like you can say whatever like the perfect example of this is uh on the any questions app or whenever you ask an athlete ever like what drives you you're um what you're good at or what you're bad at and everyone's always like oh it's what i'm bad at oh it's what i'm bad at and that, like i think it's hilarious because it's like well if it was what i was bad at i'd be playing baseball or football or golf like, no, it was 100% like, oh, I'm really good at this. I want people, oh, you're amazing. Oh, thanks, dude. Oh, like, obviously, it's what you're good at. So, like, people are being dishonest when they sell you that dream part. It's like the decisions are always, always, always made financial. It's like when you read that list of people from the ASU group that are going to US Open, because that's the group that it makes sense financially to go to that meet. So, Here. Tom, how much, how much money, let's say there was a, a God in the sky just raining money down on the world. 
How much money would he have to give you, Tom Shields, the swimmer, to where you started making your decisions based on the glory and not the money? Like, how much would you have to have in your bank account to feel comfortable being like, most important thing to me is my legacy as a swimmer and people remembering that race that I won and how often I won? It's a pretty high number. You got to consider where I live. Because I want to be able to save up That's to buy fair. a house to build a family yeah. in the area I would like to live. And I scrolled once when I got home from the games and I was counting what you put in the headline. <laughs> and I was like, okay, from Imperial Beach to Crescent City, within five minutes of the ocean, what can I afford? I can afford a house at that time, kind of in Crescent City, which is not in California. So the southernmost city in Oregon and Imperial Beach and arguably maybe, maybe, maybe stretch in Oceanside. That is it. That's where I want to live. That's where I want to be. So yeah, for me, that's like probably 200, 250, which is an absurdly high number for me to work towards at this point in my career. 200, 250 what? Guaranteed. Like that's the, that's the number, like yeah. dollars a year. And that's right. what people don't realize. It's like, oh, well, you can do that. It's like, yes, I can. But like in swimming, like to sign to that guarantee, meaning I don't do anything this year and that money's coming in, that number is a lot shorter than you think it is. Like that, that list of people. Like, I mean, like truly have a, have a 2022 like I had and still make 250K. Right. The number of people on the men's side that can do that, have that bad of a year with no positive performance and still bring that in is probably five and three of them are retired. Right. Because because yeah. it's it's no IRA 250K. It's no 401K 250K. No yeah. pensions. No, exactly. yeah. no yeah. not in, real benefits. In your bank account. My my buddy is a you know he a lot of my friends work for the government they carry badges or they put out fires they do the, you know that that type of work and it's like they talk about like oh the benefits um uh, like you know that uh, you know other uh, industries might have that they don't or that they do and it's like do you realize that like if I don't touch like if I get beat by four seconds like I did this year or by point one um you don't have health insurance <laughs> like yeah. four months later like it's it there it's a little bit different of a game you play as you grow. And I think that's why a lot of dudes look to get out, right? But um, you know, I, 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 the legacy that I inherited that I want to leave behind is a better pathway to a career. Um, I inherited that from guys like Nathan, from Grievers, like guys who get involved and really try and make like um, forcing changes for the guys below you. And the way Nathan put it is, uh, you know, in 2019, we were working on the ISL and meeting with all these people. like, look, if this ever is a thing that pays people what we should be paid or what is sustainable, like you and I will never receive that. Um, And that's like when you think about like what is the legacy, like that's what I wanted to work on. Mm -hmm. Um, Of course, everybody wants to be Phelps. Everybody wants to be, you know, according to Forbes, a hundred millionaire. But like, are we a sport or are we a person? Right. We talked about this off air the other day. But it's like, look, like surfing was able to transcend Kelly. Um, Kelly Slater. It, it, Kelly Slater, yeah, in a way, right? But still, like the, you, you say, like, you know, who do you know? They all, Anyone who doesn't surf can only really say Kelly Slater. But they they were able to shrink and find this niche. Right. You know, like none of those guys are, you know, dating Pamela Anderson anymore. But they're very, very successful athletes, pretty much way deeper into the roster than I think we are and way more sustainably. Um, every talk we have always devolves into like what is the future because like USA Swimming membership is below 2008 numbers now Yeah, that's going to affect fanship now it's going to affect people who view in 2028 it's going to affect people who watch 2032 because like people are like oh I swam in high school maybe I'll watch the games they're like we're losing that and and speaking of which Coleman this wasn't on your (laughs) list but I'm going to add it to the list We now know how much Olympic trials tickets are going to cost in 2020. An all session pass for uh, the short end of the pool in the 300 level is 600 bucks. The session? All no, all sessions. Oh, okay. I was like, which remember is is nine days now instead of the the former eight days. Um, So that's that comes out to 70 bucks a day. If you're willing to pay for all nine days of a swim meet, um, which not many people do, um, all the way up to if you want good seats, twenty three hundred bucks. So if you're try if you've got a qualifier and you're trying to take a sibling and two parents to that meet, 
and you've got to buy all nine days, that's going to run you about okay. eight grand just for tickets. So that whole trip is going to cost you a car, right? A cheap car, but a car. Yep. Um, so well, when you put it in that terms, I mean, <laughs> but hotels who, and flights what, and like food. if you're a family who's going to go all nine days, you have means, right? I mean, mo- right, most 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 kids or most families, right? But I'm saying most families who have a qualifier are going to go for one day, or are going to go watch one day when their kid swims, or maybe and two, they have and maybe maybe catch a final session. Like, oh hey, sure, yeah. Like well, I'm s- you, you, see you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. yeah, that's typically how it's, I grew up in this community, right? Um, we all did. But yeah, I 100% agree with your intended point as we market ourselves like the Kentucky Derby or we price it, but yeah. we have nothing to offer. Right. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay with charging good money for these tickets but I think expecting people to line up and write a $7,500 check 18 months out of the Olympic trials is a big freaking ask. You know, sell them in three day, ch- whatever you want to do. I don't know. There's a million different ways to chop it up. But when I look at that, that big number of money that they're asking people to put down right now, it just, it terrifies me. Like I, I think about that as like, if I if I'm not swim swam right, um, we get credentials. We don't have to pay for tickets, and and we're glad for that. But if I'm if I'm thinking about going, and I'm thinking, holy crap, seventy five hundred. They want seventy five hundred of my dollars. That's not just like a impulse buy, right? Like that's a meet with my accountant. That's a, a run through my my stock portfolio kind of number. And I know it's not that for everybody. But they got to put thirty something thousand people in this stadium. Um, you know that that's that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of money to me. Um, and they better put on one heck of a show. You know, I think the pressure is going to be through the roof if if that's what they're charging. I'm just sitting here thinking, like, how many times can I go to Mexico, or Hawaii? Right. That's that was my thought. Like, I can go on a European 14 day river cruise. Yeah. All all expenses paid for that much money and fly first class. For, for my wife and I. Yeah. It's, and it, it's, it, it's, I, I'm sorry, people who listen to this podcast know how I feel about Indianapolis, but like, it's not like Vegas. It's not LA. It's not New York. It's Indianapolis. And I, I don't hate Indianapolis, but no, but you, there's not nine days worth of stuff to do in Indianapolis. There's not like, Oh, but also, right? There's not, oh, yeah, but, you know, you can also do this while you're there. It's Indianapolis. You're going to the swim meet, and you're going to eat at Weber Grill, and you're going to Dude, that is such a good point. Like, uh, my parents are cool, but they would always go check out some World Series games. You know what I mean? They're like, swimming's cool. Like, we've done this for 30 years with you. We'll come to your sessions. Right. 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 There's. I think that that's like a value. Yeah. I mean, I think I Omaha is fairly comparable. It doesn't have to be like Omaha. You're like, oh, there's Except Indy days. doesn't have the World Series <laughs> or the yeah. College World Series. So he has just, minor league yeah. baseball. It is a good point. Game. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's a Midwestern city. You know, if the Indy 500 was happening, you know, if they had exactly. like. Yeah. <laughs> but then that adds more costs, right? Like, yeah. That's a big ticket too. I don't. This is like something I don't know, but like I don't really watch UFC anymore because it's like I'm holding out, like put out ads, make it free. If I'm not going to pay twenty bucks a month for the right to pay eighty dollars, right, to watch two fights a month, like I just I'm not going to do it. So Mm -hmm. like, how many people are we missing like that that do want to come? Right. Or like how like how how does UFC price their events in person? Like probably the premier since COVID growth sport i would say you could argue pickleball but like high-end growth right um like i i think we're competitive and it's like no (laughs) it's like when i do a clinic and i have a price point and i can see that nathan's in the same area i have to make sure i'm significantly cheaper (laughs) you know what i mean like you just have to know that right and we'll find out right if they sell all the tickets good for them um yeah (laughs) <laughs> I I'm nervous. You know, I I I wonder how much more it cost him to get in the football stadium. I think that was a I worry that that was a glamour decision that that was a somebody said, 
oh, we're cool if we're in a football stadium. Um, we, you know, Tom, I don't know if you know this, but we've mentioned this before. Dale Newberger's son manages that football stadium. Mm. Um, and everybody's going to scream to high heavens that that had nothing to do with this. Believe what you want to believe. USA Swimming and, yeah. and Indy Sports Corp have a long, long history. And Dale Newberger is a big part of that. I don't know. Mm how much of that is driving the ticket prices. Um, I have to guess that football stadiums are more expensive to rent than basketball stadiums. Yeah. Right? Um, Who's so, doing nine nights at an arena? I, like a, I mean, we're exhausted. From a, from a show standpoint. So, so much. You're we're looking at like... exhausted by the end of it. I can't imagine. I'm being, not a huge fan of music, but like you have to be like... It's like Taylor part, Swift. That's, Taylor Swift. And yeah, that's, that's it. That's Zeppelin in the, in the 70s. Like you have to be the people. Right. Yeah. To do it. So it's like, yeah, that's our news for the week. So on that <laughs> note, let's do a quick sink or swim. We're going back to short course world championships. It was announced that they will be hosted in Melbourne's outdoor venue. Do you think that having them outside will poorly affect the competition? Uh, I'm going to sink it because it's a covered outside. I think if it was an outside outside, we all know the problems that come with that, but it's a covered outside. And if you look at the pictures of the cover, it's got some, some rafters on it that the backstrokers can follow and yada, yada, yada. Um, I, I think in this case, it's not going to, I think maybe a little change of pace can be some engaging for some swimmers. I, you know, I was never a swimmer of Tom's level, but for me doing something different than whatever my home pool was just, it felt better. Um, so I think for, for most of the world that trains indoors, especially that time of year, it'll be a change of pace that might engage some people, but I don't, I'm thinking that it's going to have any negative impact unless there's a big wind or something. Yeah, I agree. I think the only factor that can really change you there is wind. it's, it's winter. They got plenty of sun. So you just need to make smart decisions around like when prelim starts and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sinking as well. So yeah, it'll be our winter, their summer. So the weather should be nice. Uh, we see this all the time at Marinostrum. Um, people swim fast there all the time at outdoor venues in, in Rome, you know, there's a lot of examples. People can swim fast outside and especially if it is covered, I think they'll be fine. It might be a little chilly in prelims. There's a chance that it could be a little chilly. I don't know. Tom, Tom, do you have like a temperature that you don't like swimming below? Um, like well, for fast. us, it's always a weapon because we're so goddamn cold all the time. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, rain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my my what is it saying? My coldest winter was a summer in San Francisco. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. ter it's terrible. But like, we show up and it's like, oh, it's raining sideways. Like, okay, cool, have fun. Whatever. <laughs> Every day, so. I'll put on my raining side. I will say the weather, like my first two years was pretty bad, like the old school way it used to be here. And then it, now it's just different. The Bay Area is not as bad as it used to be, but it is still cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next up, uh, Kyle Chalmers recently said in an interview that before the end of his career, the two things he wants to accomplish is winning a short course meters world title and a long course meters world title. Uh, both of which he'll have the opportunity to do the, in the next calendar year. Sink or swim, he will get both of those done. It was surprising to me to learn that he didn't have any individual uh, world titles in either course. Has he done short course worlds before? He has no medals. I don't think so. Um, <clears throat> I think, I don't know. I think he's going to get short course titles in, in December. I think that for sure is going to happen. Um, there's so many moving parts in long course, including whether Caleb is coming back, um, Popovici, how, how, how much he continues to rise, et cetera, et cetera. If Kyle decides to go all in on the butterfly races, um, I would, I would on balance swim, which means I think there's a 51% chance or better. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't guarantee it, but I think he could get like a 50 fly. I think he could sneak in a a 50 fly record. Um, Australia will probably, I think Australia has a better chance of being at those 2024 long course worlds because it's in, eh, no, sorry. I've got it backwards. Japan is next year. Doha is the year after. So they probably will not go to those trials. So it's gotta be Japan next summer, but home time zone, maybe. Um, 
I don't know. I've given it a better than 50-50 chance, so I guess I've got to swim it. Yeah, I mean, it's an exactor, right? So it's both. <laughs> and I think with the time he has left, obviously that would be the main reason I would think he won't be able to, as with any athlete in their 20s. It's just like, okay, time goes by fast. He's only 24. Yeah, 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 yeah. But – um, Sorry, I may have let something go there. Uh, I will swim it. I think he, like if the interest is there, absolutely, I think he can. I think that he's a guy who can, I learned this from watching him, grow as a short course athlete. He can put his mind to it. He's very good at enacting something in his mind, which I think is a lot, something a lot of swimmers struggle with, especially as they get older. It's like, okay, I want to make this change. And then the next try, that change is made. Um, I'm describing the ability to learn. But – that is what he's very, very good at. And so, yeah, I think if he transitions or I think he has a great group of support around him. I think the swimming Australia is great to their top end. At least I can't comment beyond that. I only know their top end, but um, I think they're going to pressure, do everything they can to keep him in freestyle socially and from a country standpoint. But um, the dude is a fantastic flyer um, and picked it up the 50 pretty quickly. And I think the 50 short course, like, marries really well with the 100 long course especially because he has back end speed he has like enough grit like where i think the short course on your fly is harder for guys to come into because it's just so much kicking mm -hmm. um but yeah i think so if he, if he wants to do the 100 fly long course which he seems to express interest in then um the world's your oyster there i think it's a lot less crowded at the top it always has been that's why i transitioned a long long time ago <laughs> tom do you think caleb's ever gonna race again I couldn't tell you. Um, we, I sent him a message after Worlds. Um, I felt close enough to do that. Um, respected his space, you know what I mean, after that point. Um, and it's not like we're best friends. You know, he's a decade or so younger, half a decade or so younger. Um, we swim the same event. Short course, we're pretty competitive. So we play poker when we see each other at camp. Other than that, that's about it. Um I hope he does as a fan and as a, you know, um, teammate on the national state, international stage. Um, I was trying to think of the right way to phrase that, but uh, I couldn't tell you. I am swimming Kyle Chalmers getting two world titles, one short course, one long course. I think he'll get the 100 free in Melbourne. I think he'll have, as we said, we he will have ample opportunities if he wants to go to the February world championships you know that's just another chance i think he has as good a chance as anyone to win the 100 free next summer i you know david popovich isn't going to be perfect all the time and kyle chalmers is pretty pretty damn good a lot of the time um so i think if they get into a head-to-head -head race kyle has a monster back end as popovich does their best times are two tenths apart so you know i i think he and as you said, his butterfly is just getting better. I think he'll do it. I see a scenario where he does swim those 2024 worlds because I see a scenario where he runs away from Australian media pre-2024. I could see him, you know, choosing to train somewhere else for a chunk of time just to relieve some of that pressure. I that's not inside info. I don't know anything. That's just one yeah. scenario I see because the Cody Simpson stuff is not going to chill out between now and the Olympics. Yeah, I don't disagree. I just think like where he is right now, having seen his little group at the World Cups, they're like in a very, very good spot. Really? That's mm -hmm. the only reason I would say it might. I don't see that happening within like an 18 month period. But um, who knows? You know what I mean? Yeah, like that stuff seems to affect um, Australians. It's very, very like loud and not just Kyle, but like for the last 25 years. It's been, you know, like the thing that they talk about is their media and their, and their social scenes um, on like a macro scale, like the way that they're treated in the headlines and all that. But I think that he's starting to come through that, having gone through like, a, a you know, a, I don't even know if you would say smaller because the commies is such a big deal to them. Yeah. But a smaller he, version. It seems like he's in a good place right now, right? Like he didn't, he didn't hide after that. He didn't just, just go away after that whole thing that, that whole episode um he said what he needed to say and he kind of got right back out there and it felt almost like a release of pressure like he mm. said what he needed to say and and he moved forward and like as an insider or like you know soon to be um outsider probably the way my qualifications are going <laughs> um it'd be cool if like 
So I think that's something that Croc and Phelps were able to do is like they were able to lean into it um, and kind of make it more than what it was. At least that's what it seemed like from I was very young at the time. Ian Crocker <laughs> and Michael Phelps had a semi rivalry. There was like a YouTube documentary. And it's like I always wanted to see more of that. And it's like the problem with that is like the way the nature of the sport is like unless it's like the perfect Kavik moment where that's just like a one year thing. Um, if you're going to have like a year to year rivalry, it's going to be someone who you share a flag with. Right. So it's like, that's a perfect moment for them to do that. Yeah. If they're like actually homies behind the scenes, but who knows? I, I have no the insight. personal stuff makes it yeah. a whole different ball game too. Yeah. It's like, yeah. like Connor, you know what I mean? He's like, Hey, it's just business. Hey, it's just business until he like actually hurt Khabib's feelings. But like, I think it was after the Aldo fight. He was just like, Hey, like. We're talking about MMA for anybody who doesn't. Oh, Connor yeah, sorry. Like, I'm just doing this to get the we eyes on We got baseball. Us. We got surfing. Yeah, 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 we got yeah, yeah, MMA. Yeah. Sorry. I'm all over that. <laughs> the first like, if, if swimming will grow, that's like a more common understanding of how to create those moments. Thank you.